once they have Ishmael, and he says, why don't you let that be my heir, and heir, heir, not heir or heir, although it was an heir, right? Okay. Um, and God says, no, no, no. You and Sarah will have a son, and this is the heir, and I will make you more multitudinous than the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. Up to this point, I want you to review Abraham's life, and nothing that he's ever done is like this. Okay? When, at the end of this, or matter of fact, let's go to the end of it. All right? Is that crazy? We're going to go to the end of the story, and let's see. Um, Okay, there it is. Look at verse 12. It's not exactly the end of the story. And God said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. What is it that God is about to test Abraham in? His, his faith, his trust, right? Now, can I say this? The Hebrew word that this passage uses, and if any out, anybody out there in Internet land ever hears me, Dr. Francisco, the Old Testament professor I had at Southern Baptist Seminary, said this. This word, for now I know, is not, and look at me, this. It's this. It's this. It's this. Okay? Now, Abraham was tested, and God saw that he feared him because Abraham had to do something with his hands. He had to physically do something, and it was the most outrageous, the biggest sacrifice Abraham would ever be asked to make, and any of us as well, right? But when God says, now I know, some people will say, ah, see, look at that. God doesn't know everything, does he? Okay? Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, he knew what was going to come of this all along. You guys know the story. We don't have to read it. Let's just jump ahead. What did God do instead of letting Abraham kill Isaac? Huh? He stopped him and Harold. What was it? The ram that was caught in the thicket. Okay? All right? <laughs> this is fun, right? When did God put that ram there? Beforehand. Okay? All right? So, God knew how this was coming out. Okay? But God wants to see this. You say? Let me see it. Now, do you think God was interested in Isaac dying? No, because he stopped Abraham from sacrificing him, right? What God wanted Abraham, what he wanted to see Abraham come up with or come out with was his willingness to do anything God asked him to do. Anything. Uh, can I say this? I'm just kind of talking tonight, aren't I? I will be very honest with you right now. Uh, matter of fact, we may have sang this Sunday, Mel. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Did we sing it last Sunday? Okay, where he leads me, I will follow. Okay, may I say this, please, with all due respect, and I want you to join in with me in this, okay? Are we real, really, really willing to go? If God tells us that he wants us to move to the northern part of Alaska to minister to Eskimos there, and it never gets above 20 degrees, you know, are we really willing to go? I mean, I, I have to ask myself this question. I know you have to ask yourself too. And so, when God comes along and says to Abraham what he said, he is waiting to see that Abraham will do it. We haven't read the story yet, 
But you and I know that Abraham took Isaac. And there are beautiful New Testament uh, corollaries here. Uh, By the way, chapter 22 says that Abraham cut the wood. And who carried the wood? Isaac did. Uh, What is Isaac called? Your only son. I, uh, I would even say this. He's the son of the promise. He's all bundled up in one person. He is his beloved son. He's his only son. He's his only begotten son. Oh, there you go, the of promise. That's right. And Isaac carries the wood. Okay? Now, who's that sound like? Come on, say it. Sounds like Jesus carrying his own cross, right? When we read this story, Isaac is old enough to know that something's up because Isaac looks to his dad as they go up this mountain and says, uh, are we, have, what? Where's the sacrifice? Where's the lamb? Now, let me say a couple things there, and I'm probably going to repeat myself some next Wednesday night, but I'm just having fun tonight, Okay. Abraham and Isaac had been to this rodeo a long time ago and many times because Isaac knew that there had to be wood, there had to be a knife, an altar had to be built, and there had to be a lamb. I want to show you what's been going on here. Abraham was taking Isaac and sacrificing to the Lord maybe just the two of them, and they were having some sweet fellowship Now, Isaac is old enough to ask these questions, so he is no dummy. He's no little infant. He's old enough to ask the questions, carry the wood. The Bible says that Abraham tied him up and laid him on the altar and lifted the knife. Okay? Now, are you ready for this one? And I might just, I don't know, let's let's just see where we go with this. I wonder. Now, just, just hear me out. I wonder... If, by the way, remember where this is taking place. It's in no man's land. This is not Israel yet. This is not Palestine yet. This is not the Holy Land yet, right? There are all sorts of pagans there. And we know from our Bible that other people sacrificed their children to their idols. Here comes a question. Are you ready for this? Well, first off, that just about, that disturbs me enough to make me not sleep tonight. Do you know that people in this world are still doing that? Okay. Now, I wonder if Abraham, knowing what was going on out there in the land, knowing that families sacrificed their children to their idols, I wonder now, listen, I wonder if Abraham said to himself, Do I love my God as much as they love theirs? Okay. Uh, The Lord just gave me a thought. Ready? I go by people's houses. And by the way, I have a boat myself. It's a canoe. I paid $50 for it. Okay. But I see people getting out there and waxing their boats and tarping their boats and untarping their boats and taking them to the lake every weekend, every Sunday, being on the lake. They love their boat. Okay? Right? All right. I'll use myself. Okay? I normally don't tell my dogs I love them, but I call them sweetheart and honey and you know, I, I get right in their face and let them look at me, and one of them licks me, one of them sneezes on me, okay? <laughs> Scout doesn't lick me. He'll look at me and sniff and go, <laughs> you know, all right? Okay? All right? Now, listen, you guys know, right? You know. Okay, let me throw this out. I see couples together, and they just about worship each other, okay? I see people out golfing. Um, I see people up in airplanes 
when I take the dogs out Sunday morning before I get ready for church. Okay? I see people who love their things a big bunch. Now, wait a minute. Then all of a sudden, about just about the only physical thing I can put in my hands, and I see it sitting on people's tables. Okay. Are you with me? I think, along with Abraham, we need to ask ourselves the question, do I love my God as much as somebody loves their dog or their cat or their wife or their boat Okay, or their hobby? Do I love God that much? Now, mind you, I was raised in a boat, okay? Um, the other place I was raised at was at Lebanon Racetrack, okay? I love to see those horses, okay? But remember, where's the old man's wallet stay, okay? I like it as a sport, right? But when you see, okay, uh, the Reds, uh, the pitcher hit a grand slam this week. Did I hear that? Yeah. Okay, now, do you think people went crazy in that stadium? Nuts! Okay. Then we come to church. <laughs> okay. All right. You get my drift? I think along with Abraham, we might want to ask that question. If you start asking that question, maybe the Lord's going to give you an answer to show. Is it all words? Or can you do what I ask you to do? Next Wednesday night, we're going to get into this verse by verse. But let me close with a statement, and I'll start with it next Wednesday night. But Dr. Francisco said this, A person of faith is accepted not because of his merit, but because of what God can do with him now. After this, was there anything God would ask Abraham that he wouldn't do? There was nothing. There was nothing that God would ask Abraham that he wouldn't do now. So, I hope nobody took me wrong. Again, we're going to try to rent a motorboat and go out fishing in a couple of weeks. I'm going to try to get my canoe out sometime and go fishing. Now, listen, I like this stuff, right? But again, let's seriously take a look at our own heart and our love for God and ask the question, do I really love my God as much as other people love their things? Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks for coming out tonight. All right, let's pray, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? Okay, let's think about that. Okay, let's think about that. Okay, Lord, we, we want to thank you for letting us get into the Bible. And it's pretty obvious to me that before Abraham could face this test, he had to let you and Abimelech and even in his own conscience pick out the broom and sweep up the dust to clear the air so that when you ask him to do this, he was free enough to obey you. Lord, our prayer is that we would love you more than we love anything else. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, body, and mind. The greatest of the commandments. That's what you said. Lord, you said, seek first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added unto you. Help us, Lord, that we wouldn't be people of faith words. But we would be people of faith works. Because if we obey you, then you would look at us and also say, Now, I know 
that she would do anything I ask her to do. I know that he would 